Okay, well, welcome everybody. Um, we we do a lot of the lectures um, uh, for the internet, you know, so people can listen in, you know, two o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the afternoon, whatever day of the week that they want. Um, and uh, the idea is, you know, not everybody can come to the lectures. They may not understand what the lectures are about. They don't know what to expect. Um, but meanwhile, we keep on recording, and um, I guess part of the problem is uh, our people aren't used to reading books. They're not used to listening to hard truth about who we are. Uh, they're being programmed every day by Spanish language television, los hispanos, los latinos, dye your hair, you know, lo love the white people, hate your own people. Not in, exactly in those words, but in, in words to that effect. And um, meanwhile, who's out there promoting for our people as indigenous people? Uh, who's out there uh, looking out for our rights? And what are our rights? Our rights to what? To our humanity? To the land that we're on? To the future? To the past? Nobody seems to care, most especially our own people, because we've been programmed from 500 years of being ignorant, being a destroyed people. Like right now, we have, who, who are our warriors to defend us? We have none. You know any other people in the world that don't have their, their own warriors to defend them? The Chinese got their own armies, right? Uh, the, even the African nations, well, even you look at it, but are they really to defend their, their own people? The, the colonized countries around the world where supposedly they're free, but they're not. It's kind of like, is Mexico a free country? It's still run basically by criollos, by white people. Uh, Guatemala, they can go on and uh, you eventually get to uh, Venezuela and you get to Bolivia. And they have some, some more uh, justice. They have a lot more starting out to help their own people, but those even those countries are still controlled by criollos. Um, and that's, I think, where we get a little confused. Uh, there's a lot of ignorance out there. There's a lot of good people, but there's a lot of confusion. And um, the first uh, poem I'm going to read, actually, it's only one poem. Um, it's called 1492 S Song of Evil. Kind of give you kind of little reality adjustment. 1492, Song of Evil. The first part of this song is for the European natives on our continent. You can play this song any way you want, fast or slow, short version or the long, with a banjo or a pipe organ, with a full choir or solo a cappella of a boy or a girl singer. You can sing this song in any of your languages. You, can skip, you can't skip the bad parts. All the parts are bad. Without the bad parts, there is no song. So sing this song as contrition. Sing this song as apology. Sing this song with some guilt, some shame, as if you were a moral person, a decent person, a civilized person with goodness in your heart, and as a person who knows right from wrong, the truth will set you free. This truth will even set us free, us, the Nicantlaca, the indigenous people of this continent who have been wronged, enslaved, destroyed since 1492. You can try to avoid singing this song, but it is a song you'll have to sing sooner or later. It is a song of 1492 and all the evil done. This is a song of all the evil done by Europeans who criminally came here to kill our people in 1492 with Columbus, with the savage conquistadores, with pilgrims, with covered wagons, with the English, the French, the Spanish, and the Portuguese, and the Dutch, and even the Russians, all of them coming here to our continent for free land and free wealth, free slave labor, ignoring our ownership, ignoring our humanity, 
because they all came with smallpox to spread to our people, to kill our people, a weapon of mass destruction that they hoped would exterminate us all for all the gold and silver, for all the land and wealth. All of these Europeans came here to steal our land using cowardly smallpox, using the lies of Christianity, the immorality, and the enslavement of those few of us who remained after the Europeans exterminated 70 to 100 million of our people, killing 95% of our people. Yeah, yeah, you weren't around, and you shouldn't be blamed for something that happened a long time ago, or so you say. You have no problem holding stolen land. You have no problem continuing to steal our minerals, our oil, our forests, our farmlands. You have no problem profiting from the monstrous crimes of your fathers, the crimes of your race. But you have a problem finding or having guilt or shame. You see nothing wrong with holding our lands. You know the lands belong to us. We are still here within your borders, your reservations you have made for us, your labels of Hispanic Latinos you have made for your convenience. You have your racist laws on our lands to protect your thefts to protect your crimes. You pretend we have no authority over our lands. You pretend we don't exist. Come on along and learn the lyrics of the evils done since 1492 with the explorers, the pirates, the savage Europeans who destroyed our civilizations, and then the evil racist pilgrims, the killer frontiersmen, the murderous co covered wagons, the killer cowboys, and all the land speculators who sold our land that wasn't theirs. You can sing this song with, without guilt if you are Europeans. Sing it and pretend as if it is just the past and that nothing can be done now. You can sing it without music, without words in your, in your shameless mind that wants no part of giving back any part of the lands, not one inch, not one acre. You want no part of making justice or telling truth or of being moral or being part of justice. You can do nothing or you can do everything you can, but it will not bring back the lives of the 70 to 100 million of our people that your people killed with smallpox. Or, the, the, or destroyed our civilizations, or the 500 years of slavery that we've suffered, or the burning of our libraries, or the massacres, and the destructions of our cultures, nor will you bring back the lives of those of our people that you exterminated completely from the faith of, face of humanity. You can do nothing or everything and still our cities are gone, the buffalo are down to almost nothing, and my people are in ruins. Ignorant of the genius of what we once were, we are culturally castrated from the warriors that we were. We have been made lesser human beings by being slaves of Europeans for 500 years. We know there are a few moral European natives amongst you on our continent that might have the power to bring light to this truth, it might have the courage to make justice of all of this evil of 500 years since 1492. This is a song for the Nicantlaca, for our people. It is we that matter most in the singing of this song. Our part demands even more courage. We must sing this song to ourselves and to the world, and we must take it into actions of learning and teaching, of confronting colonialism. We must be part of reconstructing the full humanity of our people from the ruins of what we are today. 
We must sing to it to ourselves every day as we learn our history of great accomplishments and of our magnificent civilizations and of the genius of our people. We must learn to live as warriors once again, but with knowledge and courage to confront the colonialism that is assimilating us into the genocidal machinery that plans for our complete extermination. There is no need for guns and bombs, only knowledge and courage, honor and unity. We must learn to sing the songs of warriors, to live the actions and lives of warriors, learning and teaching truth and living our lives, making demands for justice. We must learn to turn away from European evils, from their greed, from their selfishness, from their waste of our time, from their waste of our intellect, from their culture of evil and immorality, from their destruction of our human potential, and forward to our real human potential of genius, the genius that can only come from a people that are in knowledge of their history, from a people that stand up for themselves, who plan for the liberated future of their people where there is no colonialism, no Europeans occupying our lands, no Europeans occupying any part of our continent. This will take courage to do, even courage to imagine. There is no evil for us to want to be free and to want to take back everything that was stolen from us. Or for us to be united as one people across all of our continent. There's only, only evil in those who want to keep us perpetual slaves of the white race, stealing from us all that is ours. We want to live in peace, but we must first live in knowledge of ourselves, live in honor and dignity, live in truth, in unity, and live as a free people. Only then can we live in true peace when we and the European natives on our continent have learned to sing this song of 1492. So it, it takes into account a lot of different things. The, the Europeans have to be honest about what they've done to our people, this constant thing that we hear, oh, that was a long time ago. Uh, Jesus was over 2,000 years ago. Why are they going on and on about Jesus? Oh, that was a long time ago. I said, well, 9-11 was a long time ago. Why do you guys go on and on about 9-11? Or why do you go on about George Washington? Why do you talk about the kings of England? Why do you talk about Napoleon? Why do you talk? No, they want to hang on to what is their pride and they want us to be the shit on the floor. And so long as we allow that to keep happening, it's gonna, they're going to keep doing it. Because do we say, hey, stop that. That's wrong. That's a lie. You, you guys don't belong here. You're the natives of Europe. You ever hear any of our people say that? That's why they keep doing it. Because if you don't complain, then everything is all right. Years ago, I was talking to this very uh, liberal um, uh, white person and talked about all this. And he actually understood. He, he was a history professor. So he knew exactly what I was talking about. And at the end of it, I, I didn't know quite what to expect because the conversation kind of came up out of nowhere. So, so we finished the conversation. And, um, and, and he says, OK, we're in agreement. Uh, what am I supposed to do? I said, um, I was kind of surprised, too, for him to even to ask me that. And I said, well, start talking to your European uh, brothers and sisters and tell them that you know, they're, they're, they got stolen property and that they should all be heading back to Europe. <laughs> and he kind of looked at me and said, you know, on one level, I agree with you. It is immoral. It's horrible what we've done. But I could do that. I can go to Europe, and nothing's really going to change. Your people don't have their act together. Even if we gave it to them, what would they do with it? Are they really ready? They would, they're, they're in a lot of ways, they're more Eurocentric than a lot of Europeans. And I really didn't have an answer for that. 
other than to say, you know, well, maybe we're going to have to try a little harder to, to say no. Yeah, to say no to colonialism, to say no to ignorance, and to stand up and defend our people. And I, that was over 25 years ago. I've never forgotten that conversation with the guy, because the guy, he meant well, but he was saying, well, what could this do for me to leave? Not everybody else is going to leave. If, if you guys get your shit together, you know, and, and you start talking, you know, like you know who you are, and you start making demands, and then I'll feel bad, and I'll say, you know what? Kind of pack my bags, man. These people got their shit together. They woke up. Uh, they're proud of who they are, and they're saying that injustice, now get the fuck out of here. Yeah? And uh, it isn't happening with our people. Even a lot of our people who do know, they're too caught up in their materialism. They're too caught up in making money. They're too caught up in the Lakers and the Dodgers and whatever other sports. They're willing to die. How many people have died in these sports riots? For what? How many people have died uh, for a, over a car? Somebody is trying to steal a car and they're willing to die for it. They're willing to, to join a gang and they're willing to die for the gang. They're willing to join the military and w willing to die for the white supremacist government that is out there uh, stealing other people's land and killing other, other non-white people. They're willing to do that. But to pick up a book to say, you know what, that's wrong what you guys did. Oh, that, that, that's wrong, that, that, that's wrong what you guys did. <laughs> what you guys did is wrong. We got to straighten some of the shit out. My people, you got to get your head out of your you know what. You got to grow some courage. Get, get a book, get active, you know, start teaching yourself. Go, go up to that, that most monstrous of all the people that are torturing our people, that are doing all these horrible things. Yeah, that person in the mirror. Go have a nice talk to that person in the mirror and tell them, get your shit together, get real, get, get mature, start thinking honorably, start thinking about unity of our people. Start, you know, behaving like a full human being instead of a slave of white supremacy, a slave of colonialism, a willing participant in the genocide that is destroying our people. I could be saying this for the next 200 years, and is it going to happen? Maybe, maybe not. Depends on the circumstances of how much shit they throw on us. There's a lot of shit right now on us right now, and we're still... Got the nose up, you can still breathe. And it's, it's, so long as I can still breathe, you know, it, it's okay. And the, the problem is we don't have those warriors that can guide us, that can discipline us, that can show us uh, uh, an imagination of uh, the possibilities for the future of our people. And it's difficult because uh, for those of you who don't know about Pavlov's dog, how many of you have heard of Pavlov's dog? Okay, this is a scientific experiment, and for those of you who have dogs, you'll see kind of why it happens. They, had this, they did this experiment with these dogs that every time they came in, they, they, they rang a bell, and then they fed the dog. And then they would ring the bell, and then the dog would start to salivate. He said, oh, food, food, okay. And then uh, they kept doing this for a few weeks, and bell, food, bell, food. And then finally came and, went and then just rang, rang the bell. There was no food, but the dog still salivated. He said, the, the bell means food. Where's the food? You know? and, and that's called conditioning. And then they kept on coming in with the bell. And still, the dog wasn't getting any food, but he would still salivate because he associated one thing with the other. It's called conditioning. And with us, we've been conditioned for the last 500 years because we have nobody to protect us. We have nobody to guide us, nobody to educate us in our own interests. Nobody that's out there saying they're stealing our land. Look at that oil that's being sucked out of it. That's ours. How come we're not complaining? Those forests that are being cut uh, to make furniture and to make houses and all that, that's ours. Why aren't we complaining? Because we don't even see it as ours. Do you think of that? Every time you see, 
Do you think the people in the Middle East think, hey, hey, hey they're stealing our oil? No, no, they're paying us. No, they're paying us the price that they want to pay us. It's like, you, oh, you, you got a brand new Mercedes. I'm going to give you a, a dollar twenty-five for it, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. So if you're being forced to give up your land, to give up your dignity, uh, and you get into a habit of all this, it's a, it is a conditioning that's happening. It's something that you learn to accept. It's something that becomes your culture. It becomes your way of, of being. And that's something that may take our, our people a long time to get over. Because it's something that, that it's, it starts in the home. It gets uh, uh, followed up in the school. It gets followed up again in the, um, the job that you're working. It gets followed up in, in how you live your lives. You know, and the, the problem is that there's nobody really speaking out against this. I mean, we're doing it as Mexica Movement, as an organization, but meanwhile, there's all these other horrible things that are going on with our people. And um, one, of the, one of the things uh, uh, that's been brought up at one point, uh, how many of you have seen the movie called The Matrix? Matrix, okay, you, you know, basically the idea of the movie. And uh, this one guy uh, came up to, I, I guess about 10 years ago, and said, oh, you got to see this movie. I said, I don't watch too much movies anymore. I said, but this one you got to watch, you know. And then he even bought me a copy because so, I kept, kept on putting it off. And, and so I, I saw it, and I said, yeah, I get it. There's a kind of a similarity with what's going on with us as a people. And um, But this guy who brought this to me to see the, this whole matrix, he himself went back into the matrix. And because he was very involved in gang culture, so he went back into it, even though he understands. So a lot of this, even if you understand what the situation is, doesn't mean that you're going to stop participating in your own destruction. And um, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you know we start talking about all these different things, uh, and then people get negative and start saying, "Well, nothing is really going to change. There's nothing we can do about it. It's too late." And uh, with what we've been doing, sometimes it seems that way, because uh, again, here we are in Phoenix, not, not a not little little town. Uh, we're not in Prescott, you know. We should be able to get a lot more people in here, yeah. But it's something that the minds are kind of not ready for. They're not ready for knowledge. They're not ready for dignity. They're not ready for courage or anything like that because it's that's not for us. I mean, for us, even maybe make a lot of money, maybe become a teacher, maybe a whole bunch of different things. But for us to be thinking, you know what? We gotta be free from all these Europeans who are stealing our land. We gotta be thinking about the future. Somewhere down the road, we gotta think f freedom for our people. But the idea is, nah, that's, nah, that's just dreaming. That's crazy dreaming. Yeah, they got a better chance of winning the lottery. Yeah, they start thinking very negative about a lot of different things. But that comes from, you hear it in your families, right? I mean, you've probably heard variations on all this. And so a lot of this is reinforced by our friends and family. It's reinforced even what you see on TV or movies or even some of the attitudes uh, with sports or some of the attitudes about uh, alcoholism and drugs and all that. It's all, it's all tied in. And... Um, uh, so we get uh, some people, you know, who, who do get it. They understand, uh, but they get to a point where they're saying, yeah, I understand the history. It's really horrible, but I don't think it's realistic for us to be able to turn things around. Well, over the whole continent, actually, we are the majority of the people. If you break off the, all the apartheids and the separations and all that, if you unite all of our people... Actually, we're, we're, we're the majority. Um, 
But if you start thinking the borders and people start thinking, well, my tribe versus your tribe, the Norteño versus uh, the Sureño and blah, 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 I'm, 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 I'm Salvadorian and, and you're Mexican and all. We get into all these divisions, of course nothing is ever going to happen because we ourselves are participating in that destruction of ourselves. So you know, it, 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 gets, it gets complicated and, and it gets eventually to the point where, um, you know, you can look at all this and say, well, there's got to be a realistic way to do this. Well, I think most of you have met in one way or another because of the Internet, okay, because of uh, the YouTubes that are out there, because of all of the technology that's out there. And we're able to contact people uh, in London. We're able to contact people in uh, Caracas. We're able to contact a lot of different people. But a lot of this is just basically talk. Getting our people to actually take action, it, it's a difficult thing. It's a difficult thing. And um, uh, I guess uh, the, um, the thing uh, that I, I want to finish off with is just Figuring out, you know, how here in um, in Phoenix, how we can take a little bit more of that talk and put it into action. Out in LA, we're doing uh, weekly protests uh, to support Idle No More, which is to support our people in Canada. Right now, there's a whole bunch of racist laws taking effect, but our people in Chile are also being attacked. They're being jailed. They're being beaten. They're being killed. Uh, and more of the lands are being stolen there, as in Canada. What, what little we got left, the little crumbs that they, they left us, they want that too. And the same thing is happening in Peru and Brazil. Throughout the whole continent, it's happening. And meanwhile, I mean, there are some of our people who are standing up. But it, almost they stand up when it's almost too late. And uh, here in Arizona, you see uh, the attacks here are not because our people are Hispanic or Latino. It's because we're indigenous people. If there are a whole bunch of Españoles here uh, and all that, you think they would really care crossing the border? If They wouldn't care. This is strictly a, a racist idea of what's going on here. They basically want to make sure that, that this stays a white majority state. But the reality is in 20 years, California and Texas are going to be majority us. In 50 years, we're going to be the majority in the Western United States. See, that's what's scaring a lot of these people. And, but what good does it do us to be the majority if we're ignorant and we're self-hating and we've got the same problems, right? We're going to be like South Africa. They're the majority, but they're still letting the white people run everything. They still got the, the control of all the wealth, and, and they're not complaining even now. So... Um, here, here in um, Phoenix, uh, we're hoping that you guys can get together and maybe once a month do a protest and support Idle No More. And as, uh, that way you're supporting our people. You're all getting to know each other. You're, you're putting your words into action. And um, hopefully other people will get inspired and then you can continue the education. You can... Uh, enlighten other people about all of this that's been going on because 99% of our people don't know this history. And the 1% that do know it and do understand it, they're very afraid. So our, our people are being terrorized in a soft way. They're very afraid to speak out on any of this and um, that's part of what we want to change and the invitation is for you to figure out how you can participate in all this.